Hey everyone, it's Time Spiraled. Welcome back to some more MSCM Grand Prix. We're up to round four here. This is the final round before the top X. So the way it works in the MSCM Grand Prix is whoever gets at least three wins. Uh, well, in this case, it's it's three because we have four rounds. If we get to five rounds, it's, it's four wins. Um, anyone who has only one loss by the time they get to the final round makes it to the top X. And then it's single elimination all the way to the finals. So... Um, we are wrapping up the regular rounds here. We've got Chumbek and Zangi. I believe we've already seen Chumbek in one of our previous videos, which is, you know, totally fine. Uh, I will not be giving you a peek of that hand. It is getting shuffled back. Uh, I will show you that in just a second, and I'll show you why it was shuffled back. And over on Zangi's side, we are playing Ninjas. So Ninjas is a really fun deck. Um... We have cards, uh, new cards like Cephalovorus Flukes. Uh, one of the big reasons to be ninjas is Suzume Oshiruko, which lets you pay life, choose a creature card name you haven't chosen for her this turn, and then bring back another creature you control with the chosen name to its owner's hand. And with cards like uh, effects, uh, pardon me, like Deception, which is our reworded uh, ninjutsu, uh, it can do a lot. Unfortunately, Chumbek had to mulligan all the way to four. Um... That's a pretty rough start. Ocean Monastery means you have an Invalidate on turn one. Uh, raise the Alarms on turn two. You've got the Token Plan, but this is this is going to be a rough game. Uh, so Flukes can counter spells or abilities that target you or permanents you control, but it can also be played as a tapped uh, MDFC land. So these are not technically the first MDFCs that we've had. We've had one more in the past, but this is the first cycle uh, that we have in the format. I expect we might see more. Uh, so far, they've seen pretty fair. They're, they're seeing a smidge of play, but not all of them. But um, it's nice to see them uh, in some capacity. Uh, drew the second land, which is good, because now you have the flexibility for Invalidate and Raise the Alarm. We have a Flooded Depths being played out here, which is one of our Shock Fetches. So that's going to go get something. Uh, we got Removal, like Crucify here, that can deal... Minus five, minus five deals with quite a few things in the format. Diligent Fisherman. Uh, it's a 1-3. When it enters, you dig the top four cards for a creature card, and the rest goes on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, it's the, exactly the kind of card that you want to be bringing back to your hand. Um, very cool card. So, tapping two for Suzume Oshiruko, but that's going to get invalidated. Uh, it does mean that the Raise the Alarms aren't coming out uh, on this turn. Drew into a moment in time. So, again, another sort of... Tempo E, return target spell to its owner's hand, draw a card. Um, in my previous recording, I believe I had mistakenly called the deck control. It is, uh, as if people have been told, telling me, it is a tempo gameplay with uh, Polymorph, um, which if you had sort of peeked in the opening hands, there was a, one of those opening hands had the uh, Animorph, and uh, the target for it was also in the hand. So the deck only runs two Polymorph targets, and unfortunately, kind of like the last recording that we had, it got... Um, it got drawn a lot, uh, so it was kind of a, a, a tough place to be in. Uh, drew into Retort Nonsense. Now, this is an interesting card from End of Old and Sea. Uh, it is a three-mana counterspell, and the floor on it, though, is just counter-target spell. You don't have to do the optional part. But the optional part is you can draw four cards if you do skip your next turn. And the reason why that's not as bad as you might think is we have cards like Sunrise River, which can untap during your opponent's untap step, even though they enter tapped. When you do, though, you have to lose one life. So in this case, you would have access to at least one mana on the opponent's turn because of Sunrise River. Retort Nonsense is going to fire off here. Are we going to see the... Well, we saw a Key Smash. That was interesting. Um... Oh, okay. We're retorting nonsense. All right, I'm, I'm so sorry, Chumbek. That joke just flew right over my head. Um, we are going for the draw four, so Chumbek will skip their turn. So we'll not be able to play out, unfortunately, that uh, Sunrise River. Um, pardon, the Sunrise Prairie, the white version of it. Um, but drew into another retort nonsense. So... Yeah, so moving to the turn... We're unrise, untap Sunrise River. You can fake having a counter spell in hand. Um, that's totally something you can do. And of course, when you get to more Sunrises, you'll actually have the two mana to use things like Moment in Time, raise the alarm. So, uh, But in this case, we're seeing one of the reasons why Zangi is so big on the Ninja's deck. This is Monument to the Fallen Man, which is simply an artifact that has that costs two. 
and it has tap. You may put a creature card with mana value two, has to be exactly two, from your hand onto the battlefield. So yeah, it's a really good card. Um, funnily enough, if you caught yesterday's uh, video, it also runs a Pollet Pool package, this time not for white cards, but for Profane Emissary. But it's nice that people were complaining that with the nerf to this card, because it used to have a, a fixing uh, ability, uh, with the nerf to it, people were like, oh, we'll never see this card again. And we have still plenty of Pollet Pools in the format. So um, they're still around. Uh, so Diligent Fisherman just dug out an Iron Warden. Now, Iron Warden is really cool. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four for 2, but it enters with 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters. And when it dies, you can distribute X minus 1 minus 1 counters among any number of target creatures where X was the number of minus 1 minus 1 counters on it. Uh, it can deal with quite a few things. So Chumbek has managed to reach uh, his turn again. He's drawn, you know, a bunch of stuff. What's really important about this Monument to the Fallen Man is because you're just putting creatures onto the battlefield, you're not giving the ability to actually cast the counter spells or the return target spells. Uh, you could always use Acreonis' command to exile an attacking creature, which could be what we might see, but uh, unless there is a counter target activated ability here, we're going to be able to get some free uh, hits in with cards like Profane Emissary. I, I would assume... That we're gonna see like an Acreonis's uh command um feels like the correct piece of removal that you want for profane emissary here. Uh profane's gonna use its ability, so it replaces draws. You can go get demons instead, but you have to lose life equal to the card's mana value. If you're getting polyp pools, though, it doesn't cost you any life, you're just getting lands. And if you've got like a lot of cards already in hand and that's what you want, you go for it. What's really cool though is you've got some of the other key cards in this deck, like Profane Emissary, um, sorry, Shinrei of, there she is, uh, they, there they are, pardon me, uh, Shinrei the Ghosting Way is a Demon Rogue, so it does cost two life, but it's such a good card. It's a 2-2, two -two. it's got Deception, uh, Sacrifice a Creature, Shinrei of the Ghosting Way cannot be blocked this turn. Whenever one or more rogues you control deal combat damage to a player, you get to bring back a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So Shinrei has Deception, um, which I believe if I go here, you'll just see it, right? It's blue-black, return an unblocked attacker you control to hand, put this card onto the battlefield with your hand tapped and attacking. So there's definitely some options here, and we've also got Suzume in the hand as well. So, very curious if that's what we're going to... See. Okay, no, we're tapping the Monument to the Fallen Man... All right, let's see. Because it was Exile and Token, so we're getting two 1-1 one, one soldiers and exiling the attacking creature. There's nothing in hand that can be answered, so... Oh, I just lost connection with a server. That might be a little problem. Uh, it happens occasionally. Uh... Oh, that really looks like it was just a me thing. Whoops. I'm back. I apologize for that. That's the first time that happens during a, uh, a recording. Um, I'm going to just do a quick uh, reset of my, uh, my screen there. Pardon me for the flicker. I believe what we've missed was... Uh, I believe... I see two profanes in hand. Yeah, so I'm assuming that we dropped in Suzume Oshiruko, and then we paid one life to rescue the uh, profane emissary. So... Uh, no blocks here. Chumbex just taking the one. Not going to block with the 1-1 one, one soldiers. You want some tokens lying around for, like, Animorph. So, um, it makes sense not to, like, immediately get rid of a bunch of them. Cards like Iron Warden are quite important here because of the fact that you can distribute the counters. You can get rid of quite a few 1-1s one lying around. So, in this matchup, um, Iron Warden is doing a lot of work main board. All right, so passing it back, we've got Island. So we're starting to get quite a few lands. We've got two Sunrises, which means uh, on opponent's turn, if we want, we'll always have access to Moment in Time or raise the alarms. So Shinrei is out. So the fact that you can sacrifice a creature to make Shinrei unblockable, and then when Shinrei hits, you then get your creature back to your hand, and then you drop it into play with Monument of the Fallen Man is just such a lovely combo. Um, 
And because there is a sacrifice of creature, having an Iron Warden out is just so good. So Nebula's coming out, probably going to be just blue-black. That's going to cost two life, but, you know, it is how it is. There is no mode on Nebula that allows you to pick just one color. It used to be able to do that, but now you always have to pick two, so you're always at least shocking yourself. Um, unsurprisingly, the card is still super playable. We're going to be seeing Nebula of Empty Gold for, for years to come, as long as the card is no, is, isn't is changed any more than that. Uh, apparently I was wrong. Sorry, we're playing Black-Red, I guess, just in case we want the red activation here on Iron Warden. So I had missed it. I forgot that that had an, an actual activated ability here, uh, which is two and a red, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Shinrei is going to sack Iron Warden. Iron Warden is going to give the counters to those two soldiers. And then Shinrei will be unblockable this turn. There we go. Warden's going to be in the yard. Uh, let's see. A lot of mana open, though. So that could be quite a few raise the alarms. Though I'm assuming you're keeping some of the some of this in mind. Um, swinging in for five. Definitely, yeah. Can't block Shinrei, so Suzume is a two three. So Shinrei is going to bring back Iron Warden, which is, as I said, very good in this matchup. Uh, your monument here is tapped, so if you're casting it, you're hard casting it, um, which obviously runs the risk of slamming into a retort nonsense again. But um, it is how it is. Nope, Zangi's in a good position. He's going to pass. Raise the alarm end step here is nice. Uh, opting to not use the Sunrise Lands so that you don't have to, I'm assuming, don't have to go down to 7 life, which starts being a pretty scary number. Oh, never mind. We're using them. We're, we're going for it. Here's another Raise the Alarm. We're going up to 4. If we pull a Anamorph... It'll be really strong because it's going to give uh, Zare is going to be plus three plus zero to three of the tokens, which is going to be one, four, five, almost lethal, right? Uh, I don't remember if any of Zare's tokens have haste. I don't believe so. I think it's just uh, a horse and a bird, but. All right. Did not draw it, but you're still able to swing in for four damage here, which puts Zangi down to nine. No blocks. Uh, not flashing anything in here. All right. And apologies, I, I realized we raised the alarm at Zangi's end step, so we have all our mana. We didn't have to pay for any of it. Uh, so here's where things are funny. Uh, we drew into Herald of Oblivion. Uh, Herald used to cost one. Uh, it was really scary with one of the cards that we have there. And uh, instead, uh, now it costs two. What that means is you can now run it in... Um, you can now run it in uh, Monument of the Fallen Man decks. So right now, you know, it's only a 5-5 flyer. And obviously I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, right? Only a 5-5 flyer. Um, if Zangi takes even a few more points of hit, the Herald's going to be absolutely scary. I mean, it, it is still currently scary, especially because you can flash it in with Monument of the Fallen Man. Which means you flash it at someone's end step. Um, well, you know, you just, you get it back. So another five points of damage. Shinrei is going to trigger, going to pick up Iron Warden again. It got counterspelled, but it is what it is. Animorphs are in hand, but so is one of the Zares, and I can check around now. None of them do have... Uh... None of them have haste. So. And because Animorph requires at least one of your targets... Okay, so Bioluminescent Display came out. Okay, well, now it's a little trickier because if Zare lands off of an Animorph, that is going to be game. Um, Monument obviously can flash in Herald of Oblivion. There might actually just be... Let's see. Uh, okay. Are we doing Iron Warden here? I mean, that could make sense. I mean, Chambek is tapped. Iron Warden immediately sacrifice it can clear up the two flyers and one of the other soldiers, which means that there's not lethal with... Oh, no, there is lethal. We're down to nine life, right? So Zare could still deal sufficient damage. 
Ooh, things got really tight here all of a sudden. Um, wasn't able to put in the last few points of damage. We can always flash in... What do we got? We still have a blue. Okay, so Profane Emissary is nice because it is a 4-4 lifelink. So that can make a difference. But I'm not sure it's going to make enough difference. But yeah. Oh, true. We drew the four cards. We actually do have an extra turn. I, you know, wasn't paying attention to that. Chumbek is going to two... Well, now that seems a little silly, you know? Uh, you've got the an or you don't have the mana for Animorph. It's four. All you have to do is sacrifice a creature, and Shinrei is unblockable, right? Do we have a life that I'm not seeing? Uh, no. So we can't use this. We have moment in time mana here. Return a spell to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Okay. So my apologies. That retort nonsense that drew the four cards past the turn. So, um, of course that's what allowed us, I believe, to draw into the Animorph. So, um. Flashing an Iron Warden using Monument to the Fallen Man, not casting it, so it's not, you know, moment in time. Iron Warden's going to clean up some stuff. Shinrei becomes unblockable, and then swing for lethal. I think this is it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that... I, and, and I totally missed it. I was uh, I did not pay attention to the fact that we went for the full four draw and stuff. So yes, passing the turn uh, was 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 big there. Uh, let's switch on over real quick to look at the deck lists. Uh, here they are. So we've seen this deck before. Two copies of Zare um, in the main board. We have a bunch of nice removal. Invalidate as tax and counter. We've got Tyrannica's Endeavor, which hits quite a few things. Also makes tokens, which is important. Raise the Alarm makes tokens. Tempo plays in Moment in Time. Um, Lost Through Dreams as counter spells. Bioluminescent as Tempo. Command can exile things and make more tokens. Retort we've seen played. And then Anamorph is the big turn your tokens into a uh, Zare Heart Transformed. In the sideboard, we have cards like Tenuous Existence, which can exile creatures. One of the important ones here is that until end of turn, if a creature would enter and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. That might come in to mess around with Monument to the Fallen Man. Event Horizon is decent. One of the issues is you have to be careful with Suzume because, you know, Suzume can rescue things. Uh, Forbidden Treasure, I don't think comes in. I don't think we're bringing Unright. I, I would imagine it's some combination of, 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 of these cards. And then over on Zangi's side, we've got more Iron Wardens. I'm assuming we're going to see one of those come in. Cosmic Sinkhole is interesting. That could be a good one. Anapraxia's Endeavor is not bad. Celestial Banishment is not loading. Oh, there we go. It counters an activated or triggered ability of a non-land source. Crucify, Titan Snares. This isn't the deck where Titan Snares is going to do much. So, um, I, I would assume that uh, Fourth Iron Warden comes in. This thing is just a house and drawing it early um, will deal a lot. Expose is really good. It still hits what you need. Um, oh yeah, and this deck runs Jijun. Sometimes you just go fetch out your 6-6 Lifelink Haze Demon and just, you know, beat face with it. It's lovely. It's nice to see Flukes here. Yeah, uh, Rattle Cage Terror we haven't seen, but this can kind of bring back a bunch of cheap creatures from the graveyard. Inked Summoner can do a lot if you've lost life. It starts making a lot of creatures. Uh, yeah, I think we've kind of seen the rest. Really, I love it. The one copy of Polypools. Okay, so... All right, our players are ready, so let's get back into it. Tyrannica's Endeavor was main board, so I think I, we haven't seen anything here that's new. Over on this side, everything here is also something that we've just looked at in the deck lists. So uh, what's really interesting here is we've got some really early Sunrise play. That's three Sunrise lands. Uh, that means if Chumbek's willing to put in the life payments, uh, you're going to have a lot of mana to use on your turn and on your opponent's turn. Doesn't have the uh, turn one, however, so Expose is going to, uh, to follow. This is not the original art on Expose, um, but we have a really lovely... Um, art series. Actually, funnily enough, I believe Chumbek is the person who created the secret lair. Um, so it's all about uh, cats. Cats being shamed. So this one is... Uh, I don't know if they're all being shamed. Maybe they're just doing silly things. It's a cat secret lair. So if you're if you're a cat fan, you know, you'll, you'll see it. 
Um, what's cool about Expose is you choose a color. So in a format like MSCM Grand Prix, where you know your opponent's deck and the colors they're running, you can kind of hit certain things. So we lost the uh, Lost Through Dreams uh, here, funnily enough. Picking up an Ocean Monastery, playing out the Sunrise River. I'm assuming we're going to untap it, paying the one to have uh, Tyrannica's Endeavor online here. I love the fact that it exiles an enchantment that has been relevant in some matchups, and uh, as well as the removal mode, damage equal to number of creatures you control to a creature, or Planeswalker. Uh, this card just does a lot. And again, uh, secret layer printing here from uh, Zangi, which is funny because, you know, that's the player who's playing it. I love it when players are are, are jamming the layers that they made. Um, this one was not by Zangi, but it is also a secret layer printing, so... This one might say layer, but it's really more of a uh, champion promo, so... Uh, if you perform well in Grand Prix or uh, League, you get lovely silver border promos. So, love it. So, Propane Emissary comes in. Um, Tyrannicas can't deal with it now. It's going to make the two tapped 1-1 one, one white soldiers. Going to untap it. Let's see what we got next turn. We do have a Bioluminescent display in hand, right? So, uh, and we have Invalidate as well. I really do like the original art on Invalidate. I believe I re-arted it like once, but I still prefer the original, which is, you know, always funny. All right, so Profane's going to go search. I would imagine we're going for Polyp Pools here. To me, that makes the most sense because you want to get up to this 4-4 lifelink early, and then afterwards you can start picking up your Shinrays and your... Uh, well, you've already got Jijun in hand. I don't even have to go get this guy. Um, there's Polyp Pools. Funny little jellyfish land, and I'm assuming that's going to be the third land that we play here. Profane Emissary is now a 4-4, uh, which does a lot. And Bioluminescent Display makes uh, two blue elementals, which is cool, uh, but they can't block that turn. So you can't use it as a uh, bounce a spell and then block, so it's not, a, it's not perfect. So Rattle Cage Terror is being played. It does enter tapped. It's a 3-1. Uh, it's got an, an interesting activated ability. It's one in a black. It goes back from your graveyard to your hand. But when you do, it'll give that ability to another target creature card with mana value 3 or less in your graveyard until end of turn. But it'll cost one more to activate. So you can go 2, bring something back. 3, bring something else back. And then 4, bring something else back, uh, finally. So it can do it can do it can pick up a lot of these cards that are, you know this deck runs. Uh, this early four life is going to do so much. The fact that we're just drawing lands here is is not what Chumbek uh, wants probably. Um, there's really nothing that's opposing the profane emissary, and uh, you can't use bioluminescent display to get up to the fourth token that you need for the block here uh, because they can't block the turn that they come in. So. Uh, perfectly willing to just throw Rattle Cage Terror uh, under the bus here, saying, "Yep, yeah, that's that's fine. If if it dies, it dies. I can always pick it back up." Are we blocking? No, nope, doesn't look like we're blocking a Profane Emissary here. So um, we're going up to four damage again on Chumbek, and then Zangi is all the way up to twenty four. So paying two for an Iron Warden, even if Bioluminescent Display gets played, you can recast it. So there it is. Two Elementals, little Jellyfish Elementals, which are a staple of Love Song and Animus Vox. And uh, here's Iron Warden coming right back out. So again, it enters with three minus one, minus one counters. It's just a one, one. Uh, but when it dies, it can clear the board. So if it blocks that White Soldier token, for example, uh, I can clear every token that's there. Chumbek did not draw into an Animorph. That's kind of like the card you really want to see in this deck. Um, you want to turn one of your tokens into Zare, and then you want to absolutely clobber your opponent. Um, it's tough right here. So swinging for two in the air, no blocks. I think it's going to go back to 20. So yeah, things are looking, uh, things are looking grim because Profane Emissary can, you know, Keep getting cards. So you don't have to, you know, whiff at the top and maybe get something. You can just pull out your Shin Race. There you go. Uh, there is an Invalidate. There is a Lost Through Dreams. So Lost Through Dreams can counter any spell for white-blue, but if you hit a non-creature spell, uh, you conjure a card named Fatigue and put it on top of your library. Well, there's a lot of creatures here, so 
Uh, it doesn't fatigue you. So there's Lost Through Dreams, I would imagine. So that's going to counter the Shinrei. There we go. Uh, but we've also still got two mana open. We have the Invalidate, though. This could be a double, uh, a double hit. But the board's already pretty gross here. Yep, attacking with both. So if you're blocking the Profane Emissary, you're up for life. Yep, your Iron Warding gets through. Chips in for one. Things are looking a little grim, but an Animorph could always, you know, pull a big difference. So as I said, Zare puts a lot of bodies. The uh, the big issue with, with Zare... Okay, so we're going for... This is Suzume? No, Diligent Fisherman. I'm happy about that, because again, it's going to get invalidated. No fishing. No fishing for... <laughs> Zangi saying sad fish. Yeah, no fishing, unfortunately. Um... That's sad. Um, Zangi's making a really big sad story about this. Uh, now the family will starve. Uh, drawing another land. Wow, it's just been a lot of lands for Chumbek. That's uh, that's rough. Um, gets an island. All right. I love that island. There's no water associated, but it's just, it's gorgeous flowers. I think it's a whole cycle. Um, it's just pretty. <laughs> uh, fetching again with the other ocean monastery to get sedate tundra, making a very pretty picture of, of lands here. And, uh, all right. So we drew invalidate. Uh, that's probably not going to do too much. Uh, the elementals can block now, but, um, yeah. So, Blood Price, we haven't talked about that. It's You can cast it by sacrificing a creature and paying its Blood Price, which is black, 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 black. Polyp Pools cannot tap for black, which is, you know, why we haven't done that. All right, thinking in the draw step. I'm assuming it's whether or not we're activating Rattle Cage. I don't think we have anything else that can flash in or... We don't have the red for Iron Warden's ability here. It's very interesting that that could have been relevant with the black-red uh, Nebula of Empty Gold last game. Uh, but this Nebula has only got blue and black. Maybe there's a consideration for being open to paying for that one extra life for the red. Because um, it doesn't tap to use it. You could just use it, take out one of the 1-1 one -one elementals. and Yeah, so Zangi doesn't know one of the cards in the hand. All right, so Profane... Oh, okay, so we're, we're thinking about fetching. Here we go. Okay. So Profane's getting another copy of Shinrei, paying two life. I'm assuming this is going to be Shinrei. And because it's just Invalidate, uh, it lands. There's not a retort nonsense here in the hand. So uh, Shinrei is really good here because that's the kind of card that can sacrifice an Iron Warden. Sweep everything up. You swing for four. Uh, thankfully, Profane Emissary isn't a rogue, so uh, it does not trigger off of Shinrei. But um, there you go. Swinging with a Profane, saying, hey, you want to block? Give me four more life. We're good. Eventually, uh, we'll run out of, uh, of Elementals. There's always more Raise the Alarms, though. Um... Sunrise River here coming into play tapped. chumbek has been able to just do a few nice little chumps. Uh, life total is still at nine. We're up to five mana here. We're getting close to just being able to hard cast uh, Jedge and Dark Hunter. Uh, six, six life in case is big. Of course, invalidate means unless you're sacrificing. Uh, that's rough. But you could pay the four and sacrifice uh, Iron Warden. Zangi's the kind of player who has a great commentary. It's always funny to see what he's saying in the uh, in the spectator, not spectator chat, in the player chat. I'm the spectator. <laughs> um, all right, so swinging in for four, five, six with Shinrei and Profane Emissary here. And yeah, like they've been, you know, they've been costing a lot of life, but you know, four life every time is 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 big. So 
So here's raise the alarm. Uh, you can, I believe, always in response, well, I mean, you don't have to do it in response, but, but yeah, but before blockers. So the raise the alarms are going to hit. Before blockers, we're going to sacrifice Iron Warden. We're going to clean up all the tokens. Uh, and then we're going to hit for six. And then I would assume we're bringing back... I think I think you bring back Iron Warden. Oh, there it went. Yeah, that's that's the card keeping uh, keeping things gross right now. So and uh, you just replay it. There you go. Because you can just keep sacrificing it if more tokens come out. Uh, playing around cards like Invalidate. I mean, if you got hit with Retort nonsense, you got hit with Retort nonsense, right? Um, it is what it is. Still a mana open, Suzume Oshiruko plays around the Invalidate. There's just everything's on the field. We didn't even need Monument to the Fallen Man this game. Like, things just lined up. Acrionos' command is not bad. It can exile an attacking creature and then create two 1-1s. One uh, but I think even with the exile, the fact you can sacrifice. So, all right. Chumbek gives it up, says, hey, I don't think I can get through this one. Uh, it's been a long road for the uh, the Polymorph deck, but um, we haven't seen it Polymorph yet, which is what, you know, I wanted to see. But yeah, Iron Warden, as Zang says, just absolutely eats tokens up. So thanks again for stopping by, watching another MSCM match. We love having you here. If ever you're interested in playing the format, uh, this Grand Prix is winding down, but we have a new one that starts every month. So stay tuned. We'll have more round four content from me and from the other content creators. And then you can definitely expect as we hit the uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals that uh, we'll, show, uh, we'll show more of those matches. You might even see some players that you've seen before uh, get another stab at victory. So thanks again. Have a good one. And we'll see you in the next video.